Congratulations. Thank you. We have head coach Jared Elliott, our student athletes are Emma Halter, Ella Swindle, Madison Skinner, and Asia O'Neill. And coach will ask for your opening comments, please. Well, first I would like to congratulate Nebraska. Uh, incredible year for them. Uh, they got a lot of young talent. We're going to see a lot of them in the future here. Um, but to my team um, and to my staff who put in so much time. Uh, you know, they don't get a lot of the credit, but they do a lot of the work. And i um, super lucky to have our staff that cares so much about these players. And, you know, we were really on the struggle bus at five and three early in the season. And just ask our kids to stay with the process, uh, trust one another, work hard. Um, and when you have good quality kids that have good values and that are very humble and, and vulnerable, uh, we worked through a lot of ups and downs, a lot of tears, a lot of things that we were trying to figure out. But they put in the work to do that. And then magically, it just came together, um, and, you know, they, because they, they put in that work and they just, you could just feel it today. They were just so prepared. They just, they were on a mission to be able to do this. And the confidence they showed from the service line was remarkable uh, on both nights. And, uh, you know, we just put a tremendous amount of pressure on both teams in this tournament. And uh, ultimately, we were able to get them out of system a ton. Your questions, we'll start here, please. Yes, this is for Asia. I know you've probably served great at many times in your life, but have you ever served better than that stretch where you, in a big match, I believe you had 10 in a row and you guys went on 11-0 run, it just turned the match around. You could talk about that. Um, yeah, I don't think I have ever had a run like that, but my teammates put a lot of confidence in me. And I remember before the game, I said, I feel kind of weird with my serving today. I don't know how it's going to feel, but I think just our energy and the trust that we have with one another, there's no doubt in anything that anyone was doing the whole entire night. So it just really goes back to our team culture and how everyone really uplifts one another and allows us to do kind of crazy things. We'll stay in the first row, please. Um, Madison and Asia, you guys kind of had a moment on the court after the celebration I saw it on TV. What did you guys say to each other? I was just telling her how proud I was of her and how honored I was to be her teammate. And I'm so sad that we're not going to play together in the near future, but I know one day we will play pro together or she'll be playing with my sister, but um, just how much she's improved and just leaded this team so well. And um, yeah, I'm just super excited for her and was so happy for us. Love you, Asia. Okay. Love On you the too, aisle, Maddie. please. <laughs> Coach, if you could just kind of take us back to that first set and give us a little clarification on the red card. Oh, bad memories. Um, <laughs> yeah, my first red card of the season, I just, I don't know, we're not allowed to speak about the referees, and it just, there was an overlap that was pretty blatant that I was asking to talk to her about and got the red card. And luckily, my team stuck together. We shanked a pass, and then Maddie came up with a big out of system kill, and, you know, I was, I was really regretting that, but it's really, really glad that we were able to, to make that happen. On the aisle here, please. Um, first question two timeouts you called, the first one you were. It was after that when they came back and tied at 22-22 in the first set, and you guys scored three in a row to end the set. And then in the second set, you're down 10-7, you call timeout, and that's when these guys went nuts. You know, had, had you had responses to timeouts like that? I mean, we have, obviously. Uh, we were down 24-19, and I don't know, we've had some 24-22s throughout the season. But, you know, our conversations were not, there wasn't anything strategical. It was just trying to clean up our touches a little bit more. You know, we felt like we were, were winning the serving, serving game, and if we could just clean up our first contacts and get ourselves some swings and, you know, just trying to calm them down a little bit with the anxiousness of being in the, in the national championship match. And they were able to do that. And Ella, I mean, you're kind of new to this national championship stuff, but did it feel like you were setting up batting practice there at times? Sorry, we said like that. you're setting up batting practice for yeah. you guys. I mean, there's nothing that especially Madison could do seemed to go wrong, and everybody was just making things happen for you. Yeah, I mean, I think we talk about it all the time. We go against the best players in the country every single day in practice, and so we don't really see a lot of matches that we don't already face in practice, and that just gives us a lot of confidence. You know, me as a setter to set these girls, and they're going to go put the ball away, but also for them to take big swings. And we talk a lot about coverage. We're going to have their back in coverage, and you know, they just went out there and. They hit the ball the way they know how to hit the ball, and it's incredible. 
back row, please. Coach, what did you see from Asia serve during that run and, and, and overall? Well, I mean, most of the night, I mean, you saw we were targeting their outside hitters, and um, you know we were trying, we were doing a lot of line to line in Asia's, and then they were they were trying to um, change their formations before we served, and we were kind of serving some open spaces. But she was just hitting clean balls in that seam. I mean, we've been working on it all year long, and that's her best serving. So the lineup in terms of the matchups that we had from our service line was really good uh, in the entire match, and um, Asia just hit really clean balls, Matt, ball after ball. Second row here, please. This is for Madison. You've been part of three national championships now. They're really hard to achieve, yet you went into this championship match with the tag of defending champions. What was the degree of difficulty of having that tag all year? Honestly, nothing. I mean, we were the underdogs all season. Um, all the pressure was on everybody else that had returning people and had that connection and um, had a history of playing together and um, just coming in. Obviously, we wanted to be back to back, but that was kind of the last of our worries. We just wanted to play with one another and have so much fun in the process um, and just try to play clean Texas volley. Um, but yeah, there wasn't a lot of pressure on us. It was on everybody else, and that was great to feel for once. <laughs> back row aisle. Asia, do you, you remember ex exactly a year ago watching Akana serve and win the match? And then did that cross your mind at all as it, as it ended? Um, and has it, you know, and to know that you did that? I did think about it for a little bit after we won, um, but it was just really cool because I remember telling Kayla, like, you're going to go down history forever for doing that. Like, that was so iconic of you. And so I tried to emulate my friend Kayla tonight, <laughs> but that was just so fun. I don't know. There's really no words to explain, but yeah. You know, first row here, please. Coach, is this one a little more satisfying coming in as the underdog and you could basically just say mission accomplished? I mean, when you put on a Texas uniform, you're usually not the underdog. So it was, um, you know, for us to go out and hunt people and and put pressure on them and not live up to the expectations, it was nice to be able to have. But I think internally we knew that we were a great team and that we could win this, and that was all that mattered. Go to the first row here. Uh, the Nebraska coach, any, any of you guys can answer this coach or you guys, uh, he mentioned – there's sometimes a moment with some of his past teams where he felt the teams felt like they were a team of destiny. And he kind of thought maybe you guys had that when you faced match point against Tennessee. So can you kind of explain just how have you guys just turned it on since that Tennessee match when you dodge that bullet, you know? I feel like it just built our confidence um, and showed us how resilient we could be. I mean, we fought off two match points, and that's very, very hard to do, um, especially against a great Tennessee team. And so um, just gave, it a lot, gave us a lot of confidence in just knowing that we could accomplish great things, and it didn't matter if we were down um, 10 points or if we were up 10 points. Like, we were still going to keep leaning into one another, um, just had confidence in one another and what we could do. But it's a great feeling, obviously. We'll stay in the first row here, please. Yeah, this is for Emma. I believe Nebraska had almost as many errors as kills, and they said they could just never get into a rhythm. Obviously, you guys' serving was a big part of that, but can you just talk about defensively how it seemed like you were able to keep them from ever kind of getting any momentum? Yeah, I think we came into this game with, like, no balls hitting the floor mindset. Our block set up almost perfectly every single play, so it made the back row defense pretty easy, and they were getting great touches as well. So we were able to run down balls, and we also blocked – really, really well today. To the aisle. Coach, uh, he asked about the red card a few minutes ago. The play that led up to the yellow card a couple rallies before that looked to me and probably to you also that uh, Nebraska had two, two contacts on a cover. Is that a ball that you could challenge or is that what led to the yellow card? I never knew I got a yellow card. That's news to me. <laughs> Nobody let me know. Really? I didn't know that I got a yellow card. First I've heard it. That's the first time I heard You were right. Now that makes more sense. Yeah. So on that play, it looked like there was a double in Nebraska. Were you wondering about that? Is that a, a play that you could have challenged? I, I couldn't have challenged it. OK. I was trying to have more communication. I'd, stated it before the match that I would like to have more communication with the R2 on situations and yeah 
I'm not allowed to speak about it, so that's... But that makes more sense now. <laughs> I wish I would have known. First row here, please. Yeah, Coach Elliott, you mentioned uh, a couple days ago, obviously, this was before uh, these young women were here, but in 2009, that it was one of the most painful losses of your career in this building. Yeah. Is it, I mean, this would have been special no matter where it was, but to, to win back-to-back -back sweeps and sort of to have it here um, in Tampa, does it mean something special to you? Yeah, I talked to one of my players that was, it was part of that team. I mean, they probably don't know, but we were up 2-0 and lost 16-14 in the fifth um, in probably one of the most epic volleyball matches of all time. And... Um, a lot of sting to that, but um, you know I've always had a fun place from Tampa. I mean, it felt really good the last time we were here. I stated it here, like I would love the national championship to be here every year because it's just a great location. They put so much love into to what they're doing, and um, I want to thank them for doing that. But uh, yeah, the way that we've done it, uh, you know, someone just mentioned to me that we've been in, we, the three national championships that we've won. We've been three o three o three o. So it's a tribute to our the teams and the players and the alumni. I'm just so happy for everybody that's part of this Longhorn family. Back row. Asia, as I mentioned, you know, you, you were in this tournament as the defending national champion. There's usually a fair amount of pressure that comes along with that. You, you fight off a match point and then you beat three number one seeds to win the tournament. All, all full, full of pressure normally, but it seemed like your team played pressure free and with a lot of joy out there. What, what was going on that allowed you guys to just play that way with uh, situations that are, that are usually pretty tense. Yeah, I think it just goes back to the culture that Jared has created here. He puts the right people in this program, whether it's on the staff or the girls, and we've just built a culture where everyone loves each other and supports each other. And the whole year, um, we knew that because we had a rocky start, like we were the underdogs, and there was no pressure on us. Pressure was on every other team that we were playing because we were the lower seeded team. So there wasn't the pressure of last year where, oh my gosh, we have to do X, Y, and Z because we're number one. We were just able to play free, and we love each other, and we support one another. And throughout the whole year, it was just so fun. And this is probably the most joyous season I've ever had in my life. It was definitely challenging at times, but just today was an example. Like Everyone played free. Everyone had confidence in one another, and we were able to go out and take down some really incredible teams. Into the aisle, please. Coach, this, this match offensively felt kind of different than your match a couple nights ago where... Uh, against Wisconsin, your middle slide attack and right side attack was really hot to start, took the left side attack a little bit longer to get going, and then tonight the, that kind of flipped. Can you speak to the, just the importance of kind of sticking with the game plan and sticking with the players that you know throughout the, the course of a match? Yeah, I mean, we had a, a nice game plan, we felt like, uh, coming into this. Uh, I, I think the nerves, it kind of got ugly uh, on both sides for a while. They're just the first contacts and balls were off the net, and we were just kind of living and dying by an out-of-system game. And I said that was one of the keys that we were going to have to be good. And we took some great swings out of system and, and managed it at a pretty high level. And then as we started passing better, obviously, we were able to get our offense a little bit more involved. We got Asia a lot more going. And then we got um, Molly going. And then it just opened everything up for our team and just had a lot of good balance. And we got some nice bounces a couple times. Over here, please. Yes, for Ella. Ella, I think you are the first starting freshman center to win a national championship since Jenna Gray did it in 2016 with Stanford. You've talked the last few days about how much you learned from your older teammates, but now that you're here as a national champion as a freshman, what's been th this whole process like? Jared talked about, you know, the five and three start, but what, what's it been like for you to be sitting here now as a national champion? I mean, I think this is just such a full circle moment, like coming in as a freshman, I knew that the coaches had a lot of trust in me. and. It took a minute for me to just have all the confidence in myself, but just relying on these girls every single day. They're my teammates, but they're also my best friends. And so the relationships that we build off and on in the court, um, that's what got us here. And like, even though we had a rocky start, um, we were able to you know, come through it. And being a freshman is hard, but I just have all the faith and belief in the world in these girls, and that's how we got it done. Let's go to the back row here, please. So Ella, uh, since yeah, it's well noted that you are a freshman and Nebraska's got a whole bunch of them who are pretty good and they took it pretty hard as you would imagine in their press conference and Harper Murray said flat out that they'll win three championships in the next three years. Want to respond to that? No. 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 <laughs> no. Oh, you're not fun. <laughs> Go to the corner again, please. Madison, your coach talked a couple days ago about the fact that you've been able to find the floor 
against opponents these past couple matches, and today it looked like your toolbox was really working. You were hitting line, you were hitting corner deep, tips uh, for, from the back row, from the front row. Can you talk a little bit about that toolbox and what's helped develop it over the, over the years, you know, kind of culminating in a match like this? Um, I mean, it takes time and just kudos goes to my coaches and how much we train certain shots in practice. Um, and then again, in match time situations, it just goes back to Ella and all the people surrounding me. Um, Asia does a great job of pulling the block on the slide. They have to respect the slide queen. I'll say it again. Um, and same thing with our middles, um, Bella as well, and um, our right side as well. So they're just giving me a lot of space and Ella has great vision um, and she trusts her gut all the time and um, leaves us a lot of space to to work with, but yeah. Also, thank you to my parents for great genetics and giving me hops and whatnot, and gives me a lot of space to go over them as well. So that's nice. Go second row there, please. Madison, in addition to having the national championship for the team, can you share what it means to you to be the MOP? Yeah, that's great. Um, it's cool and it's awesome and I've worked really hard to get to this point. Um, but I mean, I told everyone last night at the banquet, I was like, I love celebrating individual awards, but I want a national championship for my team. Like I want every single one of these girls ever ring because they deserve it. Um, and they've put in so much work to get to this point. And um, for me, and individual stuff means nothing if your team's not coming first and coming out on top. So I'm just super proud of this group and so excited that we all get to enjoy this and get a trophy and get a ring and it's for everybody. It's great. Go first row here, please. For everybody up on the dais, and Emma, I'll start with you, and Coach, I'll let you finish. I only gave you one word to describe your emotions. Put your emotions into words now. Oh, goodness. I would just say so grateful. Um, these girls are, like they all said, we're all best friends, and these opportunities don't come all the time, and not many people get to do this in their lifetime. So just really taking this in and enjoying every single moment. I'm so grateful for this moment, for all the girls, and for everyone who supports us. I would say I'm pretty star starstruck right now. It hasn't really kicked in that we just won a national championship, but I think in a few days I'll really let it settle in and feel all the emotions. But yeah, I'm just very starstruck, very grateful again. I'd say it's just surreal. Um, I was so emotional on the court. I've never been so emotional ever in my life. Um, but just to have this season that we had and it being so rocky, but coming out on top and um, just the confidence that we all had together was just something that I've never been a part of. So um, it's great just to battle back and be the underdog and have people expect you not to do great and then you just, just to prove them wrong. It's awesome. Um, I would say blessed. I'm really blessed that I got this sixth year to be here. I'm glad that Jarrett trusted me to have this extra year with him. Um, we have such an incredible team. Our team has really strong faith, and we talk about that a lot, and I just feel like we've been really consistent and strong in it and trusted the process. And because of that, we were given so many blessings to be able to go out and win the way we did. So I'm just really, really blessed for this. I'm, I'm just proud. <clears throat> I just, how this team came together, you know, um, there's so many pieces that have to happen for that to, to occur. And, you know, thinking about Maddie not wanting to transfer to Texas and um, Asia not wanting to come back and, then changing your mind um, and just saying, hey, I'm enjoying it so much. It's special. And then, you know, all of our alumni, uh, I got my alumni sending me a message right now, popping champagne bottles. Um, and just, you know, and for the University of Texas, it's just there's, there's so much pride in, you know, the expectations that Texas are to win championships. And we did that today. And we did it with our backs against the wall all season long. And um, this is what sports are about. This is what's, it's so joyful. Um, you know, I wish I could be like Asia and retire um, and just leave on top. So, um, but it's, uh, yeah, just so proud of, of these young women. I mean, every one of them, the work that these two put in on the, on the end and everyone else uh, from people that weren't even starting that were, you know, we did something really special last night and just talked about who we are fighting for. And there was one of our players that really doesn't play very much at all. And she was the one that everybody was speaking to and, and tears were coming out. It was just really special to, to know that, you know, this is a true team. And there was just so much uh, gratitude for the people that are part of this. And um, we're just, I'm just super fortunate about, I mean, you talk about having a dream season. This is a dream season for me, just because of the way the women are, how they grew, and then booking anything with a national championship with a freshman setter. I mean, what else can you ask for? Go to the back row. Coach, in the big picture with everything that happened this season with, uh, in, in the sport and this week with the, the television coverage and the attendance records, obviously some things that you've been talking about all year, but where does, where do you, where does the sport go from here? Is this the, this the place where you catapult 
the, to, to new levels? Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's something that we'll continue to push. I think, you know, the, the coaches that were here in the Final Four and the other coaches know where the sport's headed. I mean, we're talking all the time. Um, you know, I have my SEC meetings coming up on the 24th of January, and I'll be pushing some things with them and trying to get all the coaches on board. But it's a spectacular sport. Uh, you know, I was actually sending some pictures of Maddie uh, in the semifinals versus Schmreck, and just the physicality of those pictures is just flat out scary. And you know, a lot of them played division uh, UCLA and Stanford, and like I think your team could beat our team back in the early '90s. Um, and it's just the physicality of this game has changed, and it's so fun to be a part of and watch. We'll go here, and this will be our final question. I have one quick for Ella and one quick for Asia, if that's okay. Ella, you had five kills, which was third most on the team. Can you speak about just your offensive mindset and, uh, and, and how that opens things up for the rest of your teammates? And then Asia, middle of your big serving run, I looked over at you and you got th this kind of smile on your face and I just wondered what's going through her mind right now. So I'll ask you, what was going through your mind kind of in the middle of that serving run? Um, yeah, I mean, I think all that goes back to just our incredible passers on the team. I wouldn't be able to run an offense or really do anything at all if it wasn't for this girl right here. And she just makes my life so easy. Um, but yeah, like all the coaches on staff want me to be super offensive, and that kind of opens up the big path for Maddie. Um, we just have so many options on this team, and thankfully I'm one of them. I like to be offensive. That's something I really like to do. So it's super fun for me, and turn around and get hype with all my teammates. Um, yeah, volleyball is a huge game of momentum, and during that run, I just could totally feel the momentum completely shift on our side, and I just knew we were playing with so much confidence and joy, and I just knew that we had the game in the bag. Obviously, it's a long match, and I knew that they're going to want to fight back, but I was just smiling because I was so happy with how we were feeling, and I just, you just feel it. I mean, when you're an athlete and you're in a sport, you just feel it, and I, I felt that we were going to win the match. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Guys.